Well, the Chicago Cubs playoffs hopes could have officially met their demise yesterday versus the uh, Washington Nationals, but they stave off elimination with a comeback win. We're going to talk about why it's important to finish the season strong, even if you don't make the playoffs right after the intro. To the number one place for all Chicago baseball. Let's start the show. All right, good morning, Chicago baseball fans. Welcome to another episode of Chicago Cubs Central. It's your boy, Big Broski. Y'all already know. Hit us up at 773-389-6954 or Chicago Baseball Central at gmail.com. Comment down below what you guys think about Chicago Cubs. Um, let's get right into the content, man. The Cubs looked like they were going to lose to the Washington Nationals yesterday at home as they've been wont to do lately. Um, but they took care of business and they staved off elimination from playoff contention, living to fight another day. And really, that's what you all you can really hope for at this point in the season with like 10 games to go. Uh, the Cubs are basically out of it, but they're still mathematically alive. They need a lot of help from the people in front of them. But you guys already know that. Yesterday, Jameson Tyone, I'm sorry, uh, Javier Hassad, Jamie was the since I was pitching today, but Javier Saab, uh, five innings pitch, seven hits, three earned runs, one walk, and five strikeouts. Uh, Armstrong came in, snuck up the place, <laughs> gave up three hits, two earned runs. Uh, Smiley came in, gave up two hits and an earned run. But Roberts, Lopez, and Hodge held down the fort. Got uh, Roberts got the win, Hodge got the save, and the Cubs got the victory, seven to six over the Washington. Nationals and honestly, it was not looking good in the fifth. In, I mean, um, yeah, in the fifth inning or so, the sixth inning, as Washington took retained the lead from the Cubs, uh, it was looking like the Cubs were gonna just fail again. Uh, in another one run loss, they probably got the good thing, they got about 31 run losses this season or something like that, which is just bananas. But hey, they were able to take care of business as uh, Cody Bellinger came in and uh, tied the game in Paredes knocked in the game winning run in the seventh inning and that's all she wrote but you guys already know all of that uh the cubs up and down all season inconsistency has really been uh the, the nature of this team whether injuries have caused it or coaching has caused it but at the end of the day as the season comes to a close the chicago cubs need to end on a high note why because it helps your youngsters it even helps the veterans um, you saw if you watched my video uh, late last month about Cody Bellinger needs to finishing finish, needing to finish strong in order to boot most of his chances of playing himself off the team and going to a different team and freeing up some money for the Chicago Cubs. Uh, he's been doing that. Cody Bellinger's had a pretty strong September. Uh, then you also have pitching Kyle Hendricks. Again, I'm sorry, my guy. I know you're a World Series winning champion. But my guy had a terrible season, but he's been pitching much better. Some of these young pitchers that's coming in, like Roberts, like Hodge, taking care of business. They're getting the experience that they need, and they got to feel like winners before they go into winter ball. And then you even have players like Ian Happ, Nico Horner, Saiya Suzuki, uh, Isaac Paredes, even Michael Bush. These guys have to finish strong, and of course, PCA. We want to see if what PCA does for an entire season on the on the big roster, but hey, he's been pretty strong, pretty solid over the last couple of months. Let's see if he can finish strong. The Cubs got three more home games, all afternoon games versus Washington with Tyone Hendricks and Imanaga uh, taking care of business. And let's see, let's see how they look. Now, the last home stand of the season versus Cincinnati will also be afternoon games with Imanaga, as I predicted, wrapping it up with the uh, closing day. <laughs> I don't even know if they close, call it that uh, in baseball. But uh, final day, uh, starter and Monaga with a chance to go out with a bang. All these guys, especially you, Jordan Wiz, because you've been looking like, eh, lately. Um, but these guys are going to enjoy the experience, revel in it, and, you know, then they can sit back and think about what if, think about all the games that they, they lost that they should have won. Think about how close they came to making the playoffs, even though they weren't really a good team this year. And let's see. Let's see what they do. I also want to see what Craig Council does as a manager over these next few games. Because, again, he hasn't really impressed me this season as the manager of the Cubs. 
He hasn't. Um, so I need him to step up and manage his, his tail off uh, as the team uh, winds down. Uh, a loss today would pretty much knock them out of the playoffs it, unless the teams in front of them lose as well, which has been happening. But let's get some wins. Let's go out with a bang. Let's get let's let's go out with a bang and some winnable games. Obviously, you can beat Washington. They're not that good. Tyone's been pitching well. Hendricks has been pitching well, and, and, and Minaga has been pitching great. So you got three pitchers that can go out there and, and, and hold down the fort, but your offense got to show up. Uh, and then you go on the road to Philadelphia with Wicks still in the side. It's a chance that that Wicks game is going to be, you know. <laughs> Steel is gonna he he's gonna give you what he gives you. He's trying to finish the season strong, and the side has been pretty solid all year, moving up from the bullpen into the starting rotation. And then you end the season with Tyone Hendricks and Imanaga. Uh obviously the Cubs need to win every single game, but it's just not looking good. You're asking a lot from a team that hasn't been playing um above their station all season. They haven't done enough to prove to me that they could go on a six, seven, eight game winning streak to end the season. It's just not going to happen, uh, especially the way they play versus Colorado, the way they played against Oakland. Um, losing both of those series pretty much put the nail in the coffin for the Chicago Cubs. They sit seven games out of the wild card with uh, the Braves in front of them uh, as Arizona, New York, and San Diego are also in front of them. New York, kudos to them for uh, not failing down the stretch like they usually do. Um, they just won, they've won their last four games. So they pretty much solidified their spot in the playoffs unless they falter. Uh, Arizona's right there. Uh, Atlanta still has a chance, uh, but San Diego is pretty much a lock in that, the number one spot with two games up on New York, New York, Arizona, four games up on the, uh, Braves and 11 games up on the Cubs. And another reason why it's important for the Cubs to finish strong is because you do not want to finish behind. St. Louis, that's just the reality of it. You're playing for pride here. You want to have a better record than your biggest division rival in the St. Louis Cardinals. Uh, so keep winning. Do not let those guys have the one-upmanship on you, the bragging rights of, hey, at least we finished with a better record than the Chicago Cubs. All right, so the Cubs got work to do still, even though it doesn't look like they're going to make the playoffs. They got to finish the season strong. Let us know in the comments how y'all feel about that. Um, can the Cubs finish strong or will they just, uh, you know, fade quietly into the night? Uh, now before I go, man, we got to give show to him, not show to Monaga, show Hey Otani his props over here on Chicago Cubs Central. My man made history 17 times yesterday. <laughs> it was ridiculous. Six for six with three home runs, two stolen bases, 10 extra base hits. I mean, the list goes on and on on top of the fact that he is the first player to hit 50 home runs and steal 50 bases. Now, I got to say this, since they made the bases bigger, uh, it was going it was it was a, a no-brainer that somebody was going to, you know, break these type of records. Uh, Ricky Henderson did it in an era where it was harder to steal bases. He'll still be the, uh, the the best base stealer in the history of Major League Baseball, in my opinion. But what Shota Imanaga has done this season is nothing short than amazing. Um, we know Ronald Acuna Jr. had an opportunity to do it, uh, but I don't think he has the power really to get to those numbers. We'll see when he gets back healthy. But listen, Shota Imanaga, not only did he set and break the record, but he did it in dominant fashion, like like the Dodgers won like 20 to four or something yesterday. The dude was amazing. It was definitely an MVP effort yesterday. Uh, and hey, good for him. Good for you, Shota. I keep saying Shota and Monaga because he's on the Cubs. Good for you, Shohei um, Otani. And that just makes you wonder about the Cubs for real because people are saying, I, I'm in a few message groups and they're saying, oh, you don't have to get the big name on your roster to be a good team, which is true, which is true. Uh, you don't have to have that big name, but it certainly helps because this Chicago Cubs team would be much better had they gone all in and offered Shohei Otani the bag that L.A. offered him. Because look at it, his, his, his wins above replacement is probably immeasurable at this point. Probably immeasurable at this point. He The Cubs definitely would have 10, 11, 12 more wins this season alone if he was on this roster. So. Looking at Juan Soto, you got to go get a player like that that's going to affect winning 
not just in the standings, but up and down the roster, encouraging your players to be winners. So, Cubs, look at what's happening. Look at what's happening when you have a player of that caliber on your roster. But if you love the game of baseball, you're going to appreciate what you saw from Shohei Otani, not just yesterday, but for the whole entire season. All right, y'all already know, hit us up, 773-389-6954 or Chicago Baseball Central at gmail.com. Leave a comment, help your boy out, like and share, and we appreciate you guys as we inch closer to 1,000 followers over here on this channel. We appreciate all the love and support. Don't forget to rock with the rest of the Shot Town Sports family. Chicago Sky Central, uh, Chicago Sky ended their season last night. Check out Hayes' episode on that. You got Chicago Bulls Central, Chicago Bears Central as the Bears head down to Indianapolis on Sunday. We will be live with the best live caller in the game in C-Dub Sunday afternoon. And, of course, we got the Shot Bulls podcast with the Cognac Gang and NBA Central and Chicago Blackhawks Central. You get the gist. All right, we're going to holler at you guys next time. Peace. To the number one place.